Office Nana. Uh, well, <laughs> nothing really, but I, I wanted to talk about the show because it was like a show that I recently watched and I really enjoyed. And I kind of want to give it some love, you know? I just want people to actually go check out the show. Trust me, these are going to be less rambly from now on. I'm trying to actually make scripts and stuff so that it's easier. Anyway, uh, so Talentless Nana is a show that came out in like 2020 on Crunchyroll and Funimation. I ended up watching it on Funimation. Uh, don't judge me. And no, I didn't watch the dub. I watched the sub. Nothing wrong with the dub. I just decided to watch the sub because it was coming out faster. So, you know, I just I wanted to binge watch it. So I just watched it that way. Um, anyways, the show starts off with an aerial view of this, like, island, and then zooms in to someone's phone, saying, Kill the enemies of humanity and save 10 million lives. Uh, and then it cuts to, like, the opening and stuff, uh, and it shows a school in front of it. Uh, and we cut to our main protagonist, Nanao Nakajima, who I'm just gonna call now, because it makes it easier, instead of saying Nanao every time. Uh... So basically a bunch of these kids, including now, have been like shipped off to this like summer camp classroom style thing on this deserted island. And all the kids in the classroom have like superpowers or what they call paranormal activities, uh, uh, activities, abilities, <laughs> uh, except for now, who is talentless. Because of that, he's bullied and kind of an outcast and, you know, everyone kind of, at least the actual like powerful people see him as kind of useless. Um, but anyways, we, we get a, like a quick shot of these kids showing off some of their powers uh, and then they get stopped because the teacher tells them, uh, you know, hey, you know, the whole reason you guys are here is to train and fight the enemies of humanity, which look like your generic like Power Rangers bad guy, kind of like uh, that and like a mixture of like a Dark Souls enemy almost or a Dark Souls boss. Just, you know, it's your generic filler bad guy that you're supposed to kill kind of thing. Anyway, they then introduce a transfer student named Kyoya, who's like this stoic white haired guy who gives off this no BS attitude. And like, I guess usually people will, when they come into the classroom, immediately tell you what your power is and all this stuff, uh, or, or just be more friendly, I guess. But uh, Kyoya is like, you know, he doesn't even really want to be there. So anyway, they, they, people immediately, or the one of the bully guys immediately asks him, like, oh, what's your power then, huh? Like, I'm trying to hide it from us. And he just kind of ignores him and says, like, is there a rule saying I have to tell you uh, my power? And he, like, intimidates them. So everyone kind of just backs away. Because usually the stronger uh, a talent or a power, the more likely they're just to, like, keep it to themselves. It's not really, like, a rule, but, you know, usually that's what happens. Uh, but apparently, uh, so anyway, uh, apparently this year there's two transfer students, and of course, she's your classic clumsy kawaii uh, girl. Yep. Uh, her name is Nana, uh, which, yeah, I know, right? The name of the show. Anyway, uh, no, so now you know why I kind of decided to call Nanao just now because if i kept saying the now and na na over and over again i would lose my fucking mind anyway um so nana is like this uh super bubbly people pleaser kind of girl uh and she reveals that her power is mind reading and she ends up sitting next to now and uh you know everyone immediately likes her and stuff and you know even now obviously now instantly has a crush on her you know the basic love at first sight and all that shit anyway so we fast forward to uh <clears throat> uh nana's like kind of asking now uh about like oh what's uh you get bullied don't you <laughs> and uh he's kind of like yeah i mean <laughs> obviously he doesn't want to be known as the guy who gets bullied but Anyway, he responds with yeah, kind of, and everyone else and the like the two bullies kind of respond for her or for him and say like, yeah, it's because he's talentless, like he doesn't have a superpower, so he's basically useless, and so you know, he's like at the bottom of the list. Uh, so anyway, uh, they like are doing this thing where they're like trying to pick a class president or whatever, uh, an AKA a leader, and uh, obviously the two like 
strongest guys, the fire and ice guy, which are the two bullies, uh, want to be uh, the leaders because they think their power is way more powerful than everyone else. So they should obviously be in charge. So anyway, um, Nana, for some reason, decides to uh, suggest that now should be in charge uh, because I guess so. Uh, I mean, it's all part of her plan later on, but like she sets it up so that like, oh yeah, he should, uh, he should be in charge. And obviously the fire guy and the ice guy kind of get upset because they're like, that guy, the guy without any sort of power. So this leads to, uh, the fire guy wants to fight now. And so, and I think the ice guy does too, but mostly the fire guy wants to fight now and show him that like, you can't be leader. If you can't even beat me, you shouldn't even be leader. So, okay, cool. Uh, we cut to this scene where uh, Nana is kind of following now around uh, while he walks around the island and she's like and he's like why are you following me like <laughs> don't be wrong it's nice but I just met you and you're kind of just following me for no reason so Nana's like oh you know I just thought you would show me around um, the school and stuff you know I kind of like you or, or like I want to get closer to you because i think we have a lot in common or whatever and so they, they like do the classic montage of them getting to know each other and then they end up with this cliff and the cliff is like uh has these rope uh what do you call them rope like uh fencing right like the classic ones that you see at the beach and stuff and uh nana gets pushed by something and is about to fall and now stops her from falling and catches her and stuff and they have this whole moment and stuff and that like really solidifies the fact that he wants to protect her and and she's like you know uh this helpless little girl who's like you know he wants to protect and stuff and to the next day where the two bullies the ice guy and the fire guy decided to go and, f and start fighting because they want to show off their suit their powers are better than each other right so when they're doing that um ice guy is losing and the fire guy eventually overpowers him and then the fire guy is like you know i'm told you i was the top of the class and stuff the guy won uh he kind of wants to show everybody that he's like way more stronger right so he challenges now uh or i think he's, he's trying to like say that like no one else can beat him and stuff and then like nana kind of eggs him on or something and the fire guy instantly gets pissed off because duh he's a hothead and he throws this gigantic like fireball straight at her uh and also a crowd of people and now it's like holy shit i uh you know i wasn't invested in like trying to fight or do anything but but now i have to kind of step in right and so that's when he reveals that plot twist he does have a superpower the superpower is to cancel other people's superpowers kind of like uh you know black clover now does have a superpower and he manages to stop the entire fireball by making this like force field kind of looking thing i'm not really sure what it is like he blocks it with his body but later on he also says that he like can cancel people's power by touching them so i'm not sure if it's a mixture of both like maybe he can cancel powers by blocking them but also cancel them by touching them anyway um <clears throat> so obviously he saves Nana and saves all those people and stuff and the fire guy is like reprimanded for throwing the fireball directly at people and all this shit and uh, we move forward we fast forward to uh, Nana and now are walk back to the cliff that they were at last time and Nana is like man you know why don't you ever um, talk about your, your, your uh, power you know you I didn't know you had such a amazing power and uh he's all like well you know people already see me as a normie or like an outcast so i mean if you imagine you imagine if they knew that i could cancel their powers i'd be even more of an outcast or even an enemy probably so he kind of and also he thinks that his power itself is basically useless so he doesn't really care uh he thinks he's just way below everyone else right anyway uh, <clears throat> uh, starts relating to now by saying like, oh, you know, my power isn't actually that great either. It's uh, honestly, it's kind of a burden because uh, I can always hear people's minds and it's kind of annoying. 
And, you know, there's never really a moment of silence and all this shit. And so now it says, you know, I can cancel your power by touching you or whatever, if that's okay with you. And she says, yeah. They hold hands and they have this like nice moment where she's like, oh my gosh, I can finally stop hearing noises and voices and stuff. It's so crazy. You know, thank you so much. And then they're having this really touching moment. And that's when we get the next twist. Nana pushes now off the cliff. So that the rope that had snapped before when Nana basically almost fell was basically set up so that way the next time they came by she would it would be easier for her to throw him off the cliff. And like holy shit. <laughs> I gotta pause here. Like so um Okay, well okay, so this is so hold on. So it turns out that Nana was the girl at the beginning, or like the, the person who was holding the phone at the beginning, and she was sent there to kill all the superpowered kids because they're like a danger to society. And like this, I think this like shady, this government uh, sect, I'm not really sure if it's the actual world government or just the government sect, uh, sent her in there uh, to kill them. But like, it's crazy because not only did they send her in there, she also doesn't have superpowers herself. So she lied about having the fucking mind reading thing. It turns out she's just really good at reading people, kind of like, like a Sherlock Holmes kind of thing. And she was manipulating everybody all along, like by telling them that, oh, I can read minds and stuff. So it's fucking crazy that she can actually like, <clears throat> she fooled everybody, including the, the viewers. Cause like, you know, you get the title of the show, called Na uh, Talentless Nana. And then you get Nanao, who's also called Talentless. They're like doing all these red herring things. And then Nana comes in and she says she's a mind reader and all this stuff. And it's just, <laughs> it's crazy. Like, uh, so like she killed now, which is like, it's not really shown why. I mean, I guess the reason she killed him was because he's weak as fuck anyway. But it also doesn't really make sense because like, she doesn't have a superpower, so there was... He would have been, like, your least threat. Uh, to her, at least, you know? But I guess it makes sense, though. Killing the weakest guy, because it's the easiest one, to see if she could even get... Uh, you know, if she could even get away with it and stuff, I guess. But still. Uh, but, like, holy shit. This is where I... The show went from a five, like generic anime with kid with no powers who suddenly gets superpowers or something or becomes the most important character in the show. You know, your Black Clovers, Naruto, uh, My Hero Academia kind of things. And like turns into a 10 for me. Like the the, the fact that she tricked everybody, uh, you know, the fact that she's like murdering these people and stuff. And like... It's, it's kind of like uh, the show The Boys meets the show uh, Invincible, but like in anime form. Because in The Boys, they try and like, you know, there's a reason the guy wants to kill the superheroes is because he hates them or whatever, or they killed his wife or whatever is what he thinks, right? And then in Invincible, there's like flawed heroes and shit, and there's like the, the gore and stuff uh, in that like... Uh, spoilers if you haven't seen like literally the first episode of invincible there's that scene where omni man just goes out on the fucking rampage and kills all the fucking fake justice league members you know like the justice league members in their show and i think that's like basically the vibe that i'm getting from this thing <clears throat> so anyway like like the concept is really cool you know like here we get a secret agent girl basically with no powers other than her skills and wits that managed to infiltrate a superpowered school and is tasked with murdering each and every one of them. Like, some of these kids have crazy ass powers and she still has to do it all while not getting caught and figuring out how to deal with those, like, OP fucking abilities. And all this has to be done in 13 episodes, which is insane to me because it's just like, ah, I was immediately hooked. <laughs> but anyway, <clears throat> rant over. Uh, uh, so I, like I said, um, it's kind of like, what if the weak main character didn't go down the hero path, you know, and kept doing the thing where it's like, oh, I'm gonna be a side of good. I'm gonna be a hero. 
even without my powers, and instead decided to, like, you know, be the antagonist, which is kind of crazy. It's kind of cool. It's kind of like, uh, I can't think of many other shows, really, off the top of my head, other than, like, uh, Avatar, where they have uh, the guy who has no Anon, who actually doesn't have, or uh, Amon, who doesn't actually have powers. He just has chi bending or stuff like that. Uh, and stuff like that, it, you know, there, at the time of me watching this, I didn't really know too many shows of it. So puts you in this weird spot where you want to root for her because she's our main character now. But like, on the other hand, some of the kids here are like innocent, you know, like they're not like, like when she kills now, right? He has the ability to cancel powers. Her phone flashes saying uh, that she killed now possible casualties that he could have caused or whatever right was in the upwards of 1 million which is like how though because all he can do is cancels other people's superpowers so it doesn't really make sense how he's supposed to kill millions of people but like that's basically what she's going off of so like you can tell that she's kind of doing what she's told which is weird but she's like kind of a dick she's like really cold and uncaring and puts on this fake face all the time to manipulate these kids so that she can get them into situations where she can murder them way easier right and it's like ah oh, you're like why is no one seeing this like there are so many times where she gets lucky in the show and they just kind of ignore that part it's ah oh, like uh like there's a scene okay so like uh episode two right there's a scene i'm just not even i'm not even going in uh in order this was literally just to talk about episode one to get you into the show and now i just want to talk about some of my favorite moments so in episode two uh nana is uh people are like starting to notice that now is missing and this one kid specifically notices uh i'm not sure why he specifically notices but whatever uh this kid I don't know his name, but he has like the ability to time travel, but also teleport at the same time. So wherever he time travels in the past, uh, and if say he like moves, right? And he ends up like uh, 20 feet to the right. When he comes back to the present, he is 20 feet to the right and in the present. So it's like moving time and space, which is kind of cool. <clears throat> so anyway, um, Hold on, give me one sec so uh because he can move like time and space or whatever uh he's kind of he's obviously like a dangerous person uh to nana right now because motherfucker can actually go back in time and see where now kind of went to and the guy like kind of notices that uh like he went back in time at one point and he noticed that uh now was walking with nana at one point or something like that and so that's why he starts questioning her. And Nana's like, oh, fuck. This guy's like, oh, I, he's going to catch on. But she kind of thought it through. because So remember when I said in episode one, they went on this weird walk, right? And they went to the cliff. And then they went back again and stuff. Uh, and then they went back to the cliff later on. So the whole point of that also was setting up kind of an alibi that they went to multiple different areas and stuff to kind of lose people so they wouldn't be able to track him as easily like where he actually went or whatever and where he died um, so the guy's like slowly figuring that out and it's you think she's gonna get caught it's so like ah oh, but she, she he teams up with her which is really dumb because it's like dude you're literally walking around with her to try and figure out if she did it or not but because she's so like innocent and so and she's like oh my god yeah i i heard that he actually went home uh from his parents or whatever right uh to his parents or whatever um so she like tricks him in a way uh can't remember exactly what she does but she like tricks him to going to this lake and at the lake um earlier that day in the episode in episode two uh the ice guy had frozen the entire lake solid and so like it you know it froze it from the top to the bottom and it's just insane how he froze the entire lake because that's also like kind of explained like this is a little more based in real world scientific kind of thing right uh so 
it's not your generic shonen thing where it's just like everybody uh, has crazy superpowers and it's just uh, you know accepted that they have superpowers. Like Todoroki making a in My Hero Academia making an entire mountain of ice. That's just oh yeah, damn, that's impressive. But it's also like oh yeah, he can do that. In the show, they literally point out the fact that the amount of energy needed or like needed to be taken away from that uh lake to be frozen solid like that is just insane it breaks like physics you know and so they pointed out uh, but anyway getting sidetracked um so when the lake is frozen or whatever she sets it up so that when the time traveling guy is with her she like makes him jump back and forth uh like three or four times in a row right and like the more times he jumps back in time the more out of breath he gets the more tired and the more he's like oh, you know i can't even i can't even do it uh and then she's like please you know i'm cheering you on please teleport to to this location specifically i think i know where he went and all this stuff right so she teleports he teleports back in time to where he ends up at the bottom of the ocean like underwater or not uh not in the bottom of the ocean on the bottom of the lake underwater and because he was so out of breath he ends up drowning and she figures that she timed it well so that like no one would find the body because the next morning the guy would have frozen the lake already so essentially the guy froze at the bottom of the lake uh after or like before it had frozen so the entire thing is is frozen solid so and it takes like you know days maybe months for it to thaw out uh, so no one will find the body so it's like a perfect crime it's like holy shit and she figured that out <clears throat> and then like in episode three there's like a guy who has like uh he can print out photographs from his um uh, uh hold on so this guy who can like print out photographs right uh i think he like prints them out from his head or some shit uh or or he just makes them it's never really shown anyway uh he prints out these photographs right like like polaroids that show the future or like predictions of stuff that's gonna happen and he knows that for a fact uh they uh whenever it's about someone else well actually that they they will always happen i think it this is what it was i think there was like a weird uh that a hundred percent of the time it will happen right he shows this by like showing that uh showing nana a picture of her about to get soup spilled on her and then the two seconds later soup spills on her because some guy bumped into her and shit <clears throat> and then uh you know nana's like that's ridiculous it's not real but it turns out it is it is real uh the guy's able to predict shit and he has a picture saying that nana is going to kill him and so he starts using that to blackmail Nana into like, hey, you know, I can show this to people. And ex if I explain my power and stuff, you'll be in a lot of trouble. So, you know, but I don't want to jump directly to getting you in trouble. Matter of fact, I kind of want you to do a lot of things for me. So if you just do everything I say and be like my slave, uh, I won't show anybody the picture and stuff. And Nana's like, you know, she plays along for a while. Because obviously she's like, fuck, I gotta figure out a way to like stop this. She tries to kill him at one point, but he has a picture saying that she was gonna try and stab him with like scissors or something. And she tries to do it and uh, it stops. Uh, or no, no, uh, no it's because he has the, the picture saying that he's gonna die later on. And so it's, uh, there's like luck kind of intervenes and stops her from killing him. And so what it is is basically he knows that until the picture is fulfilled until his time right which is supposed to be at night that day uh he's safe till then right because uh no amount of uh of, of trickery or or stuff of uh, anything happening during the day is going to change that prediction that luck because uh it's already predetermined basically so he just makes Nana do all these weird shit and stuff. And then he eventually gets her into this closet where it's like, okay, so this is where you're going to kill me, huh? Or whatever. And then um, he shows uh, Nana manages to trick him by slipping a real Polaroid into his collection of like memory photos, right? 
and it shows him on top of her about to kill her so he thinks oh even better you know by the end of today i'm gonna be i'm gonna win i'm gonna kill you and i'm just gonna get away with it you know because that's that's how it works and then boom he gets tricked and she manages to kill him and it's it's just oh it's it's crazy i like i'm messing things up because it's been a while since i've watched episode three and i don't really want to rewatch it for this this uh uh, review because I just want to show you guys what stood out to me after watching it uh, like a month or two ago so that's how cool it is that it actually stuck in my head like the show's really interesting and I really wanted to talk about it because it's just so fun to me uh, the whole idea of like her trying to kill all these people and stuff <clears throat> my favorite part of this though is there is an antagonist aka or I guess a protagonist whatever you would call it because so the Kyoya guy is very suspicious of her. And he starts noticing like, hey, you know, a lot of the people that have been dying or missing, right? That have like gone disappearing have been people that you've kind of gotten close to or that have hung out around you. And she's like, oh, I don't know what you mean and all that stuff. And so she's like, shit, now I got to kill this guy uh, because obviously he's getting a little too nosy and stuff. <clears throat> so she starts tailing him for a bit and starts figuring out like you know what his uh routine is and stuff and she finds out that oh this guy goes and uh takes care of this cat in this abandoned like side of the school where there's like a little like i guess what it used to be a laboratory or something uh you know like your classic lab that has the bunsen burners and all that stuff and the little desk and the sink and stuff uh so she notices this guy comes in and he'll feed the cat a little thing of tuna and then a little heat up a little bowl of milk using the Bunsen burners and stuff and feeds him. And she's all like, okay, all right, I have a plan. If I make it look like an accident, I can get rid of him like this. So she waits for the next time that he goes to go feed the cat and he's going out to go feed the cat, right? And she had set off all the gas and left it on. Uh, and had taken the cat away because she's not <laughs> completely heartless, I guess. She decides to keep the cat. Anyway, she sets it up so that like he would go in, the room's full of gas and stuff. He goes over to try and light the, the little Bunsen burner so that he can uh, heat up the milk, right? And boom! Gigantic explosion just fucking blows up the whole lab. How people didn't hear it or see it, I have no fucking clue. But it blows up and it's like insane right and usually nana stands over the corpse of the people or or like likes to gloat a little right because <clears throat> she's like yeah i just got rid of another guy so she stands she walks over to the the ro rubble and sees like his body there covered in flames as he well he like came out of the flames made a few movements and then fell over and she's like yeah you know i killed him and she walked over and you know she was like oh i'm so sorry you had to die or whatever uh kind of in her head she's not really saying anything she's kind of like oh my gosh i'm so sorry with her monotone voice right and motherfucker comes back to life and grabs her leg and it's like what the fuck and then he's all like uh she tries to play it off to be like oh i'm Oh my god i just came here i showed up and i like saw the explosion are you okay? like wha oh my gosh i thought you were dead or whatever right she's trying to hide her fear but she's freaking the fuck out because it's like i just blew up the building and this guy's still alive and so the guy stands up and kind of tells her you know do you want to know uh what my talent is or whatever or like there's a bit of banter between but like he tells her do you want to know what my talent is and uh he reveals that his talent it's not if i remember correctly it's not immortality it's invincibility which is just way more badass sounding like i'm not immortal i'm invincible it's different but it's insane because now we have this sherlock holmes and moriarty kind of fucking deal where it's like kyoya is like the sherlock holmes now and uh nana is this moriarty trying to get away with all this shit and kyoya doesn't have enough 
info to pin her on this, right? He still doesn't want to jump to conclusions or anything, right? But now Nana has an actual antagonist. Like this guy is, uh, at least he says he's invincible. But Nana's like, I gotta figure out a way to get rid of him because I can't have him snooping around what I'm trying to do my mission. I still have tons of other people to kill. So we keep getting these like moments where she almost gets caught by Kilia and it's, oh, it's just so fun. It's just so awesome. Uh, yeah. Uh, but <laughs> that's where I'm going to stop because I'm losing my voice. Um, I hope you guys like the new microphone that I got. I finally upgraded a little bit. Uh, my next upgrade comes on Wednesday. So hopefully I'll get a slightly better mic or a more usable mic than the one I have right now. But we'll see. Anyway, um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. And I will catch you guys uh, in the next one. And like I said, if you haven't already checked out Talentless Nana, you should definitely check it out. It's on Funimation, Crunchyroll. I don't think it's on Verve, which is kind of sad because... But, it, you know, it's on Crunchyroll, I guess. Kind of weird that it's like that because Crunchyroll and Verve are the same thing. Whatever. Anyway, uh, yeah, you should check it out. Uh, I think even like the first episode is free on some some of them or on some things you know like you could probably even find it on youtube but honestly i just wanted to talk about the show because i really enjoyed it um i am reviewing it only because i still am watching it and i still want to to continue watching it but that's why i have this much hype because i haven't finished it yet and i and i i want to urge people to try and go check it out and just push them to see more about it um i've gotten a couple friends into it that are still haven't watched it yet but you know they're they sounded interested and i was like you know what maybe i should make a video on this because it sounds it's really interesting to me right the show is uh, really fun who knows maybe the show will like take a nosedive near the end but there's only 12 episodes and i've watched up to episode six so i'm at the halfway point and i'm still still hooked man i still want to watch more of it so yeah that was my thoughts and kind of review i guess of talentless nana i hope you guys enjoyed uh, if you could leave a like or a sub to the channel would be awesome uh i'm not getting any many comments so i'm not gonna ask you to leave one but it's great for engagement obviously so here's to hoping anyway I will catch you all later.